All right, guys, let's get into it. I want to talk about some common questions I've been getting in a lot of comments. I want to address those, as well as the timeline with me and Ryan Bowen, kind of bring it up to current date for people who are like, what the fuck is going on here? And, and just kind of like set it straight, because there's going to be so much talk about this going forward. There's going to be a content monster. I imagine anytime Ryan's involved with something, you know, he breaks the internet even on his own. You know, he's his own internet breaking wrecking ball of content, which, hey, power to him. But a lot of people are going to be talking about it because this is one of those matches that has genuine animosity. Well, let's talk about that because Ryan made his video about signing the paper and said, uh, signing the contract and said, you're going to see, you know, you've been belittling me for two years or some shit like that. So I'm going to want to address that, okay? But first, there's like a lot of comments, you know, I'm getting people are talking a lot of shit. Some people saying that I said, oh, you know, look at me now. I said this match would never happen. You know, my father told me a long time ago never to say never. And every time I say fucking never, some weird shit happens cosmically that it happens. And it just so happens that I am an arm wrestler at heart. I'd love to do it professionally. And it is a passion of mine. And the right set of circumstances came together that it made sense. And I don't want to have another uh, stretch like I did through this COVID where I didn't do anything for years. So the stars of the line, you know, Ryan says he can't stand to be in the same room as me. We'll talk about that. Well, it looks like it's on. We've still got some hurdles to get over with the way COVID's going and the world's going. Everything's changing day to day, week to week. As far as today, we're inked, we're agreed, we're set. So like I said, I just want to talk about some things before uh, before we get on the Q&As and maybe not touch on them. As far as the whole COVID thing, I want to address another thing now too. I'm going to rewind it back and put the Sasha thing to bed. But I'm going to do it now. I'm going to put it to bed. First of all, I saw a few times people were saying how I weighed Sasha by like 10, 15, 20 kilograms. And then I'm like 240 right now. No, I've never been 240 or even close to it. The heaviest I ever was on a scale was at New England's. However, however, on that scale, I was 231. Dressed, shoes, sweatshirt. After breakfast and a couple coffees, and I had just taken my kids to the doctors the day before on a doctor scale, and the thing around the whole building was that the scale was like five pounds heavy, and per my son's doctor, it was five pounds off. So 231 minus jeans and shoes, and then being off of more than a few pounds, that's a long cry from 240. Second of all, me and my weight with Sasho, and I'm addressing these because they came in. My weight with Sasho, I was not 10, 20 kilograms heavier than him. We were in a weight class. I landed in England to make 95 kilograms, which is where we agreed at. And I was there at 95 kilograms. What I did after I ate a bunch of food and shit like that, doesn't matter. In the same weight class. That's like saying that some of these guys who cut 30, 40 pounds aren't really the weight class holder because they made the weight. I didn't have to do anything extreme like that. Was I was I in that 220 range? Maybe. Maybe maybe that high teens, maybe 220. But that's par for the course. 10 pound cuts, nothing for nobody. Was it the best 220 I've ever been? No. And for real, guys, listen, you can take what you want out of me being honest. I'm not cut and dry with my answers sometimes. People know I was coming off of COVID, being inactive for a long time, and people ask me honest questions and go, how do you feel you would do with him if you were prepared? Some people don't want to hear that I wasn't prepared. Some people don't want to hear. Yes, I could be living in a gym. I could be doing everything differently. I could be. But the fact was, do I think that Sasha was having a great day? Did he stay fit the whole time? Did he stay training the whole time? Yeah. His own training group said he was the best he's been. For me, that wasn't the case. Now, the result's the result. But don't be butthurt if I don't tell you what you want to hear. Like, nope, I'm an absolute fucking dandiest, and that's it. And I'll, I. That guy's just way ahead of me. I personally don't believe that. I personally believe he's very beatable for me. Because I pulled matches like that. If I got to reflect on a guy, a few years back, Craig Coulier smashed me. 
A little bit of rule problems, a little bit of setup problems, a little bit of me problems. Equaled getting smashed. I got my shit together, pulled him in a little bit different organization, tempered a little bit of the bullshit, and he was bigger and stronger and I beat him. So the harassment about stop making excuses, this is what this is. This is what we're doing here. We're cheering our stories. So what are you tuning in for if you don't see somebody's transformation and, and whatnot? Like, like a fucking robot? Uh, yes. Uh, just so I could seem humble to you guys, so I could seem humble? I am humble. The guy did a great job. He had a great day. He put in the work. He trained. There was plenty of room for me to grow from that point. He beat me. But stop trying to make it like I'm making some grand excuse because I can't handle a loss. It's not the first loss I've taken. And it won't be the first loss I avenge. But now on to Ryan. So, guys, never been 240. I wasn't 100 kilograms more than fucking Sasho. He's very catchable. And he will be caught. Different days, brother. Ryan. Ryan, Ryan, Ryan. Ryan says we don't like each other. I have a hard time swallowing that. Because what the fuck did I do to you, Ryan, to make you not like me? All I did was call you on your bullshit. This, in a nutshell, is you were at the zoo. You decided to take a trip to the zoo. And you stopped by the gorilla pen to look at the gorilla. And then you started taunting the gorilla and fucking the, with the gorilla. And that dude was just sitting there eating his banana and playing with his fucking tire and doing some cool shit like that. He didn't really want to be fucked with by you. But you kept taunting and taunting and taunting and taunting. And the gorilla reached out and fucked you up a little bit. And then you want to go and sue zoos and talk about how gorillas are dangerous beasts and get on Dr. Phil and say how you survived an attack from a gorilla and make a book about it. And then play the victim. No. You do what you do. You, you picked me as a target years ago. And it felt like you cut every accolade I had because all you tried to do is pick it apart. Why is it? Why you can beat me? Why I'm weak? What my lanes are? And you've never been in the same... Say you've sat down in the same room as me and you can get a feeling from them. I had no idea you were this cos, cosmic mystic. You never grabbed my hand. You never touched me. But I see what you've done. You've cannibalized all your arm muscles around you. You take everybody that you kind of like admire and as soon as you feel like you can get one up on them, you want to smash them. I mean, look what you played... How you played Lachlan. Look at how you played him. All you did was talk about how his pronation was weak and how you're going to smash him. And that's good for your YouTube... I personally would never play that with one of my friends. I wouldn't need to generate uh, views that bad to play for camera because I wouldn't want somebody else out there. If you guys are playing it off, I wouldn't want somebody else out there getting it misconstrued and thinking that I'm disrespecting my friend. And I wouldn't want them going around thinking other people are thinking I'm misconstrued. I have a little more loyalty than that. What the fuck you do if it was real or not? I feel like it, you're like a reptile. Like, as soon as you can, you're big enough to eat the person that was taking care of you. You will. That's a snake. You put up in the timeline for all you people catching up. I wasn't even on YouTube. And I used to go on YouTube to watch arm wrestling videos. And I saw fucking half dozen videos on why I could beat Rob, why why I could smash Rob, why I could take the hammer from Rob. And I'm just like, what in the fuck? You were taking free chops at somebody, free swings. And I wasn't there to even rebuttal. So what did I do? I got on YouTube. To be like, listen here, motherfucker. I said on Neil's podcast, you were a good puller. And you can't take that. You've got to go more, deeper, harder. Push the issue. So then there became an issue. I told you what I thought about you. Very descriptively. I set you straight. And then it became, I go about my business and Uncle John has RPRs. And I started doing RPRs. I'm just over here. The difference was, I never attacked you. You laser beam focused on me. So how can you not like me? I always minded my own business. You were always up in my fucking grill like this. So I was going about my merry way, and you were fucking stalking me. And in the meantime, you were trying to cut it down. You were trying to cut me down. Why Lachlan can crush me? Why I train with 100 guys stronger than Rob? Why is it going to be stronger than me? Why can't you be trained with a world-class guy, a strong guy? Why are you going to always be throwing the that punch in there, that fucking angry needle? So... We did the RPRs, and I was lifting weights. I wasn't lifting weights to bust Ryan Bowen. I was lifting weights to win the competition. But you didn't like that, because I was winning. 
And then you came back at me when I saw you saying, we're going to do this lift right now, and we're going to smash Rob. Not the other 100 people that are signed up for the contest. Smash me. So now you're targeting me again. And then you come up with some wonky-ass crazy shit that was terrible. So I got to be like, bro, you call that a fucking lift? Like, look at what I did. Look what you did. It's ridiculous. You're, it's not even the same shit. But that was hurting your feelings all of a sudden. That's me attacking you. No, you know what the problem is? I think you got by a lot through the internet with pulling your bullshit cards, and people don't call you on it as much. And I'm calling you on it. I call you on it. And then you've had something to say about every wall match I've had. You've had something to say about every fucking step of the way. It's You're the harasser, and because you want my spot. And that's cool, but there's a way to go about it. And then with the Sasho thing, I know. I know. I, I lost the Sasho. I just talked about that. It's okay. It happens. I saw the GOAT go 0 and 6 a bunch of times. We'll see Sasho go 0 and 6. Maybe I'll give him an 0 6 next time. But you get on there and you're like blasting me with it, like trying to bring me down. So on that day, what if he was the number one guy in the world? Where's that put me? Could I still have been number two? That's a big fucking gap from where people consider you. So what? Listen, George Foreman got knocked out by Muhammad Ali. You know what? People were petrified of that dude. That dude was a bad motherfucker who knocked everyone else out except Muhammad Ali. But you wanted to get on there and shit on me. So what did I do? I gave you a taste of your own medicine. Then you call me fragile. And you call me fucking, you're, you're banging on my pictures because I don't, I, don't, I don't flex and look for the lighting in every picture. I don't have to. I don't have to sit there and be like, like this in every picture and tell you my measurements and shit like that. That shit will speak for itself when you meet me. So it, it is whatever. But I'm sitting there shaking Sasha and you're calling me flat tire. So of course I jump on you. I'm like, who are you to fucking talk that shit? Who are you? Like, you're just looking for something to pounce on. And then you invite Sasha immediately. And it was almost like kind of like you were dying for something to dig at. Which you were. You honed it on me. Because you don't like some of the realities I delivered to you. So what happened? You talked all that shit about Locker. The difference was, I said with Sasha, like, ooh, we're going to give it the college try. I'm not up, but I'll, I'll try. And there was a lot of thing more around that match than preparedness. It was just a new setup with an awkward guy. But you you just wanted to just fucking punch it home. Okay. I didn't talk shit about Sasho. You you said that you made 30 videos about Lachlan and why you're gonna smash him. And he's gonna quit arm wrestling. Wow, this is your friend. You wanna make him quit arm wrestling? He's gonna retire and go into the depressive state that only his mama can get him out of or something. Wow. What a fucking chap. So then you get smoked by that guy. And what I do? I only gave you a taste of your own medicine. And you cry. You cry. I'm terrible. You get me the same room as me. I'm fucking terrible. You're a joke, guy. You're a fucking joke. You can't deal with what you've been dishing out. You can't even take a sliver of it. And you call people the snowflake army. And after that locker match, you're putting this bullshit Tony Robbins video going to get up. Get up. Yeah, I was inspired, bro. I was inspired to fuck with my kids. But everything has been cause and effect. It's been response videos. Think about that. I don't sit there and go out there. Sometimes people talk to me if I'm doing a live, and I'm like, who's that guy? I'm tired of the fucking Ryan Bowen bullshit because we've probably gotten a good portion of your views based on this bullshit you play. But see, I'm allowed to not like you because you've been the antagonist. You've been the one that's been on my ass and trying to chop some of my credentials and some of the things I've done and tried to find lanes to bring me down. And you tried to step on my head through this platform right here. All I've done is had a real colorful way of putting you in your place via this platform. But it's like when fist fights happen, there's usually an antagonist. And there's one person that, you know, if they get a bloody lip, they want to go, oh, well, he punched me. It's like, yeah, motherfucker, tell how many times you pushed me and spit in my face. After a while, people can only take so much, Ryan. So, that's the backstory. And then we won't get into the whole match we were supposed to have that fell through and, you know, your word and all this shit and whatever bullshit video you put out last night or the other night, how you were well, hilarious. You got to think about what you're doing first, too. I mean, like, when you're sitting there telling the world, like, I haven't had time. I've been moving. Well, Lottie fucking died. Did you take time to eat? Did you take time to take a shit? Did you take time to do anything? Moving, like, are you an actual robot that just moves, like, 
Welcome to the real world, dude. That's what you try jumping on the construction sites and see what you do all day. But one day you had to be blue collar. Congratulations. You had to do some work other than pro nation and arm wrestling a fucking spring hand. Congratulations. But you had time to make like three videos. You know how like contradictory that is that you had time to make a bunch of videos when I was just busting your balls about signing it. I don't care if you sign it. You don't take the match. That's fine. It was just a little bit of a poke, a little fun. Not that we're capable of having fun, apparently. But you made like three videos saying, I don't have time to sign this. And I assure you, and then talk for 10 minutes. When the signing video you made was one minute long, you made like three 10 minute videos saying how you couldn't sign it and you weren't scared. While you were fucking sex panthering on your pillow like this and shit. That's why we don't see eye to eye. You contradict yourself and you really don't see things through reality. That's our backstory. We end up here because I can't see eye to eye with this motherfucker. And he's a crazy person. But don't cry victim that I've belittled you. Go back and watch all your shit that I'm tagged in. And if you can't see that, which I don't think you can, based on your series of videos and, you know, your fucking lunacy. If you can't see that, no help for you, brother. Cliff note. At the press conference, if you're trying to sell views, don't get pushy shovey with me. Like you did with Lockie and shit. Don't. You'll look like a fucking jack-o'-lantern. I promise.